Okay, so let us begin. First of all, thank you very much. And um, I appreciate you all joining the session. I appreciate you joining to this SAP FICO beginner class. Purpose of this class basically is to provide an overview of SAP ecosystem. FICO perspective, that what does FICO consist of? So today's session is just for one hour. And uh, on high level, we will try to make you all an idea and understanding about SAP ecosystem. So that is the goal for today. And uh, that is what we will be planning to do today. So again, I welcome you to the session and uh, thank you everyone. I hope uh, my voice is coming clearly to everyone and everybody can hear my voice clearly. So as I mentioned, so today's session is about finance overview. So what does the different functions, different modules, different capabilities we have as far as SAP finance is concerned? So what does it consist of? What does it have? So during the session today, this is what we will be discussing. So first and foremost, we'll give an overview of SAP Finance. Then we'll talk about uh, general ledger accounting. Then we talk about SAP payable accounting, so account payable, and what is this actually consist of. So we'll talk about that. We talk about account receivable, fixed asset accounting, and uh, financial statements. One of the goal is to produce financial statements from the SAP. That is what we do. So that is what we will be discussing and talking about. So SAP finance overview, general ledger accounting, account payable, account receivable, asset accounting, and financial statement. So this is our agenda for today, for next one hour and so. And in that, again, I welcome and thank you everyone for joining the session. Briefly introducing myself. So I have been doing SAP since 1998. So many years. And uh, in my professional experience, I primarily worked with three companies. I was associate partner with IBM and I was senior director with Accenture and Capgemini. And uh, these are some of the companies where I worked and I did different functions in various companies and industries. I've been teaching since very start. Somebody asked me that how many <clears throat> classes, how many students I have taught, I have no idea. So I cannot even count number of batches, leave alone number of students since last 24 years. So many, many, many. So when we look at the financial overview and when we look at the finance, so what is this basically consist of and what does this basically has? So if you look at these two arrows carefully, the very first arrow is called external accounting. And the second one here is, which we look at at the bottom, 
इज इंटरनल अकाउंटिंग एक्सटर्नल एंड इंटरनल नाउ व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एक्सटर्नल सो इफ यू लुक एट द बैलेंस शीट प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस लिक्विडेशन कैलकुलेशन टैक्सेशन टैक्स यू आर पेइंग टू द गवर्नमेंट is external reporting by every company whether it's public or private small large medium any kind of a company you have to pay tax so when you are paying tax to the government you are doing external accounting you have to produce a balance sheet you have to produce a profit and loss and submit to the government and if you are a public company reporting requirement even more stringent lot of public company they will put their balance sheet on the newspaper <clears throat> or on their website so because of that this is called external reporting because you are you have to report to the external powers entities government tax department auditors etc then second is internal accounting so there is external accounting and then we have internal accounting internal accounting basically means that how can we do accounting which the purpose for the internal functioning of the company because so if you see that um, internal reporting profit what is my profit how much money we are making in our company or not making are we making loss so all those different aspects are for the purpose of internal reporting where we have to report internally and that is part of internal reporting which is for the purpose of you like to know expenses is a cost center you like to see how many expenses you are incurring and you need to know oh you are making more more expenses on travel than normal you are making more expenses on buying uh, office stationery you are doing more expenses on particular element in hr and uh, other activities so external reporting and internal so the entire function of the finance can be divided into these two now overview now when we look at uh, financial accounting in the financial accounting the first and foremost we have a account receivable accounting ar we have account payable accounting we have asset accounting we have a treasury management we have a general ledger accounting now see here balance sheet and pnl ultimately production of balance sheet and pnl or profit and loss is one of the primary goal these are what uh, these are the two at least minimum statutory report which you require from every company there could be many more reporting dozens and others but balance sheet and pnl are the most fundamental come Uh, reports for any business entity small or medium or large private public most companies most countries and then if you see here hr inventory management purchasing sales that basically mean these functions also contribute also contribute to the balance sheet and pnl h human resources you are incurring on salary that is your expense your inventory management inventory your asset purchasing normally in the purchasing you are in you are uh, involving different kind of expenses you have a sales sales is basically 
having uh, different kind of revenue. So your revenue come from sales. So sales gives you revenue, purchasing giving you different kind of uh, your expenses on the purchasing, liabilities, vendor liabilities create, inventory management is basically your asset and HR is another very major expense area as far as the company is concerned. So just to go through like uh, who we have on the phone today. So, so we have a, first of all, thank you everyone um, for joining the session. I really appreciate. So we have uh, Pratik, good evening. And uh, we have Kishore, good evening. Ravi, good evening. Uh, Kea Faruqi, good evening. Hero, uh, good evening. Uh, Kunal, good evening. Farhana, good evening. Davis, good evening. Yasmin, good evening. Amrita, good evening. Ravi, good evening. Rizwan, good evening. Um, Zamil, good evening. Uh, Abadin, good evening. Manoj, good evening. Ritu, good evening. Jimmy, good evening. Uh, Nina, good evening. Uh, Saikran, good evening. Uh, Bala, good evening. Supriya, good evening. Ru, good evening. So thank you everyone and uh, welcome you to the session. I really appreciate you all joining the session. Thank you. And uh, I hope uh, my voice you can all hear and uh, you can see my screen. Uh, if uh, you find any problem hearing my voice, if you find any problem uh, hearing and or seeing my screen, then obviously there is a uh, question section and you can you can type there. Um, so thank you, everyone. First of all, welcome. Okay, so coming back to my presentation, and uh, and here we were talking about. So now, the very first element of finance or any module for that matter is called. If you see here, that is called FI overview organization structure. Now let's pay attention to this word called organization structure. <coughs> organization structure basically means internal structure of your company. Pepsi is a company. Coca-Cola is a company. Apple is a company. Verizon is a company, T-Mobile is a company, Nike is a company. When we say it is a company, what does it is? It is a various organization unit at different offices. It has different manufacturing plants. It might have different warehouses. It might have different stores. It might have different distribution centers. And there were thousands of people possibly working in different departments. Some in working de finance departments are working sales departments are working purchasing department. So different department, these people are working. Now, what is this all basically means? Okay. So that is what we are trying to understand. So here, We have a client and uh, in the client, uh, we can have uh, different companies, company code one, company code two, company code three. Then we can have a different business areas. You can maintain different kind of business areas. You can have a different plants, divisions, sales department. And all of them together is constituting your company. You have a different plants, different stores, different warehouses, different distribution centers different sales department, different divisions, different business areas, 
different companies. Within the company, you can have a different other companies as well. So you can have a multiple different type of companies in your enterprise. So that is possible. And all of them together is called organization structures. And that is what this basically means. Now, look at this picture carefully. Account receivable. Receivable come from the sales. This is incoming orders. We get an order from our customer. When we get an order, we deliver the product to them. And after delivering the product, we basically invoice them. And when we invoice them, that become my revenue. Payment transaction, dunning. Dunning basically means automatic payment reminders. If my customer has not paid me, we can do reminders to that customer. And then we can do cash management. And then from that, we can get balance sheet and PL, profit and loss. Then this is another view. Now here we have a account payable where we pay to the vendor. We are talking the sales cycle. Now here we are talking the payable. Pay means paying to the supplier. And here we create a purchase order. If I need a material, then we create a purchase order. Then we do a good seat from the material supplied by the vendor. And then we do an invoice receipt. We receive the invoice from the supplier. Now, in this case, we have to make a payment. In case of customer, last slide, we receive money. In case of vendor, we pay money. So it's expense. So it is important for us. So we need to know revenue and also our expenses. Revenue come from receivable. Expense come from payable. Asset accounting. We might have different machines, equipments, different kind of devices. And then for them, we can do asset accounting. In different kind of asset accounting, we can have a different assets. You can have a different class. You see this word here, asset class. You can divide your asset in different classes. Building, one class. Vehicle, another class. Equipment, another class. Land, another class. We can have many, many classes. Because one of the part of the financial reporting is asset also. And then you can have a different depreciations because over the period of time, the cost and asset value changes. And that is why we have different depreciation. And then over the period of time, that cost changes. And that is why it is important to change the cost. Okay, asset accounting. Then another element is general ledger accounting. Everything goes to general ledger. 
जनरल लेजर इज द फंडामेंटल मास्टर डेटा इन फाइनेंस अल्टीमेटली एट द एंड ऑफ द डे ऑल योर रिवेन्यूज ऑल योर एक्सपेंसिस ऑल योर लाइबिलिटीज ऑल योर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन मोस्ट ऑफ देम समेर इट हिट इन टू सम जियर ऑलवेज डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली so general ledger accounting is fundamental if you have a revenue it hit your customer and also reconciliation account there is account associated to it when you go to pay bill it hit to your vendor but also to another account as well so eventually everything hit to an account <clears throat> and then we have a general ledger accounting let's we talked about it in general ledger accounting we can talk a little bit more in detail general ledger accounting the first and foremost is the organization unit and the second one is gl master data general ledger in sap is a master data customer is the master data vendor is the master data why it is called master data because it is used repetitively any data which is used again and again and again is called master data because one customer we are we may be getting sales orders like in uh, in a b2b uh, business to business uh, environment we get orders all the time in case of uh, business to consumer we get a uh, business all the time So it's a very common occurrence. And then we do different kind of accounting transactions in the general ledger. So we do different transactions. In the whole finance, and if you look at this picture, this picture probably will summarize most of it. look at this picture carefully so in this picture everything is being put together in the boxes and how each of these box is connected so if you see there is a green box here sales and distribution in sales and distribution means when we are selling the product to the customer that become your fiar finance and account receivable we receive the money from the customer eventually goes to general ledger revenue here we have a materials management from the materials management where we are procuring purchasing the goods and then we have to pay to the vendor and that create vendor liability that become your account payable then we have a asset accounting and when you have asset when you're doing depreciations ultimately they are hitting to a general ledger when you're doing a travel planning you're traveling incurring different expenses all those travel expenses your air bill hotel food this that for many company travel is a major expense especially for the consulting company the primary expense is travel and they have to keep track of all those different expenses into general ledger balance sheet uh, bank accounting so when you are getting a money ultimately goes to the bank when you sending money out going out from the bank you are depositing the cash you are receiving the check you are depositing check you are issuing check you are doing online transfer so bank accounting so if we see what does the finance consist of so this picture and these different boxes which you see at your screen 
these boxes describe define explain all different elements of finance account receivable account payable asset accounting travel banking and eventually everything get into some general ledger and then we can produce different financial reports it could be balance sheet or it could be bno and there are numerous other reports but these two are most fundamental means every company has to produce at least balance sheet and pnl because ultimately if nothing else you have to do the right taxation to the government if you don't do proper taxation uncle is going to be unhappy so your balance sheet and pnl has to be right but apart from these two you can do millions of other different reports for internal planning managing coordination of your company so that is where we can have all these different kind of reports now we have organization unit company code now let's understand that company code is the most fundamental unit in sap finance so company code is a legal entity remember the word legal entity i use the word pepsi for example so pepsi us and pepsi canada are two separate legal entities all the part of the same company pepsi but pepsi us is one legal entity pepsi canada is another legal entity pepsi japan is another legal entity pepsi uk is another legal entity pepsi us is governed by us laws pepsi canada is governed by canadian laws so that entity which you registered that tax id remember that tax id that represent a legal formation of an a business entity that legal formation of the entity in sap is presented represented by company code company code is the most fundamental entity legal entity in sap where all financial transaction takes place in one comp in in pepsi you can have a 20 different companies pepsi is in there every country on a on a planet earth even in one country you can have multiple legal entities too so we can have many 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 legal entities if you want to based upon the size dimensions of your company but ultimately what is the company code company code is the legal entity and that is one of the most fundamental organization unit which we define in sap okay that is what this basically means and that is what we see here on this screen company code so we can have a uh, many many company code you see that us company code canada company code mexico company code germany company code japan company code so you can have is a four digit key you see the alpha numeric is a four digit key and because it is four digit key you can have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of company code if you want to okay so that is the purpose of this so these are different company code which we can present it in sap then we can have a a different uh, other uh, business entities um you know is called area of operations or business areas or divisions so let's take an example so you are a pepsi 
Now, within Pepsi, you can have a different division. You have a food division, a beverage division, Apple, you have a Mac division, you have an iPhone division, you have an iPad division, you have an iPod division, one company. So business area, which you see here, is the internal division of the company. So within one company, you can have multiple divisions. Normally across product line, but they could be whatever way we want to define. Business area is a, an internal division of company. So I took an example of uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola and all that. So you can have all these different business entities in the company. So these are the different entities which we can have in SAP space. Okay. Um, Now, you can have many, many business areas. You have a machinery, one area, plant construction, another area, automotive, another division, electronic, another division, chemical, another division. So you can have many, many divisions in your company. Okay. Now, we have a, something called chart of account. You see, look at here carefully. It says, GL account master, chart of account chart of account what is chart of account chart of account is a schema of different general ledger we can have a different general ledgers In chart of account, you can have a different GLs, many different kind of a GL. You have a GL for revenue, GL for this kind of expense, that kind of expense. You can have hundreds of different kind of expenses for salary, for travel, for this, for that. So, in one company, you can have a you know 400, 500, 600 different type of general ledgers. And that is where the chart of account come into the picture. Chart of account is a grouping a schema of different general ledgers. So we see here, you have a chart of account and you can link chart of account to a company code. And one chart of account can be assigned to one or multiple company code. So I have the same chart of account in US, I have the same chart of account in Canada, I have the same chart of account in England. Or you can have a different, your choice. Doesn't make a difference. Normally people keep it same. The region. So if you have a same general ledger across, then you can do across company code reportings. If you have a one GL for your exp same expense in 10 companies, so reporting is easy because you have the same general ledger. But if you want to keep it different for whatever reason, you can keep it different. You have a choice. So you, have a, you can define chart of account. And then after defining chart of account, you can assign to different company codes. So here we have a chart of account. And if you see here, account definition, account X. Now see here, this is very, very powerful. We have account and you have a company code and company code. So I just mentioned to you that one account could be in the US and can also be there in Canada. And same account could be there in uh, Japan. Okay, but that might be a problem too because in US, the currency is US dollars. In Canada, currency is Canadian dollars. In Japan, currency is uh, Yuan. So what does that basically mean? That is what is that is the problem being solved with this picture. If you look at carefully, Company code specific setting. Company code specific setting means if I'm using the same 
chart of account and same general ledger in multiple company codes then within the same company code i can have information in the in general ledger is specific to that company means i can maintain in us in same gl canada i can manage in us dollars in same gl in canada i can manage in canadian dollar gl is same but SAP allows you to manage in different information, for example, currency. There could be many other information too. Currency is probably the most common. It's very powerful. This is uh, called uh, account group. You see this account group. Now, as I mentioned to you that there could be many, 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 many different kind of accounts account for expenses and revenues of an asset or this kind of expense or that kind of expense could be many i've seen dozens and dozens and dozens of accounts few hundred account could be there but you can group them you see account group account group basically means grouping of different account in different packets so you have an account for cash you have an account for asset you have an account for material you have accounts for profit loss, you account for liability, you account for this kind of expense. So you can define your different accounts into different groups. And that is called account groups. And that is where the account group come into the picture. Okay, so that is where the account group come into the picture. And that is what the account group basically means. <clears throat> and here we have something called uh, some interesting concept. Look at this picture carefully. Reconciliation account. Now let's take this example. Uh, recon let's understand this concept of reconciliation account with an example. So, customers here are my revenue. Vendors are my liability, right? Now, for these customers, I can say this customer owe me $10,000. This customer need to pay us $50,000. This customer need to pay us $50,000. So, different customer can pay us different amount. Okay, but that amount 10,000 or 50,000 and 20,000 which we need from customers should be there somewhere in the system. Those accounts are also posted in a specific GL account and that GL account is called reconciliation account. So these are posted in the Reconciliation account. Okay. Financial statement versions. This is another interesting feature. Look at carefully. Financial statement version. Now, what does this basically mean? So, if you look at here in USA, I have an asset and liability. In Germany, this is my asset and liability. In Thailand, I have an asset and liability. Every country, your definition of balance sheet could be slightly different. The different accounts, the classification of those accounts, what is in balance sheet, what is balance sheet account, what is your expense account, what is your PL account, based upon country laws. Because fundamentally, accounting is also governed and managed, impacted by country also. So for different countries, we can have a different financial statements.
So here we can have a different statement. And I can create a balance, uh, my financial statement for USA, the way as per the US government requires. And in Germany, as a Germany government required, and Japan, as a Japanese government required, and so on and so forth. And remember, taxation is very different by every country. US taxation and Canadian taxation is different. US taxation and Indian taxation is different. US taxation and Brazilian taxation is different. US taxation and South African taxation is very different. The clauses are different. But they reflect on your financial statements. Parallel accounting method. Now, what happened? Parallel accounting method basically means that uh, we can also have, like I have a country, Germany, and when I'm posting my financial account, now I have a parallel accounting means, and this happened in multinational companies, that I am uh, required to report as per US laws and as per European laws. Same company, but I'm going to report in two different company, country, legal, accounting, laws. And that is called parallel accounting. So. In same company, I can report in as per the US law and I can also produce a report in European laws. You get what you want. And that is parallel accounting. That's very powerful. And uh, we can do different uh, transactions and all that. So if you see here, uh, this is a posting an account. So if I log into SAP, <clears throat> And if I log into SAP, okay, some people uh, have joined now. I think I see BJ has joined, BJ Pujari has joined, Roop Krishna has joined, Lana has joined. Uh, I think a little late. Uh, and then Ru Kumar, okay, Ru Kumar joined before. Okay, so thank you all. Uh, uh, for joining we started 45 minutes before back so for the people who joined late so we started uh, we started 45 minutes back okay so now logging to the sap so this is sap so let me try to log in to SAP. How do we log into SAP? So we log off. And then let us say I want to log in. So I want to log in. And this is called log on pad. So this is log on pad. And this log on pad is come with a small icon. All of you will have SAP access as well. So if you click on it, and this is SAP GUI for Windows. And uh, if I want to log into SAP, I hit click. Okay. Okay. I log in. Enter. So <clears throat> you're logged into SAP. Now, so we go to let's say financial accounting. Financial accounting. General ledger. And just posting some documents. 
we will be doing all these different exercises many 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 times just to give in a flavor so enter gl account for example and uh, that is what you see here gl account posting okay so this is what we are doing gl account posting document so this is uh, entering a gl account for example i put a document date so let's say date is um, today and I put some kind of a reference. Uh, this is some office expense. I can put some further comment. And uh, you know what is this all about? And then I can see this GL account. And I want to debit this account. And uh, when I debit and credit, say I have a, some amount and I have a, this account. And then I have debit. Uh, this account and then we make it entry. So we can debit and credit an account. Simple. And uh, we save it. Wow. Congratulations. We have done our first exercise many more we'll do this also many many time but at least we're done once and if i want to see the document and if i want to see what we have done this is the document we posted this is the document number in this company code which we configure in year 2022 in document date is january 12th 2022 this is the posting date period one january this is some office expense and this account is credited and this account is debited. We are able to post a simple GL account. Okay, let's do some more exercise. So I have a, so we exit out and uh, let us say I want to go to account receivable and I go to document entry and I want to post and customer invoice. And when I go to customer, now this is customer invoice I'm posting. So select a customer. So this is first is customer. So I select which customer we're talking about. So, and we select the customer. And we have all these different customers. And then we select the one we want. So let's say we select this customer. This is an example. This is the customer we have selected. This is the invoice state. This is the date on which we are doing invoicing. So this invoice state. Then uh, how much amount? dollars we can put some comment uh, custom invoice some amount you can put some comment it's my customer this name of customer and we are debiting a customer because at the time of invoicing customer is debited and then we have to have an offset account so this is offset account and this is a thousand dollars and we hit enter and we hit enter and then we save it see the message in the bottom document one eight zero 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 one was posted in company code z025 we have learned how to create and post and a customer invoice congratulations you have done our second exercise we're gonna do this million time more but at least we have done once if the purpose of doing this basic transaction is just to show you a little bit of a look and feel of the system it just to give a perspective and just feel of it otherwise all these different transactions there is a numerous amount of detail behind each of them 
We are not talking about all of them because that's not the goal today. It's just to give in a perspective and point of view, an overview. So this is my uh, customer invoice number. This is in company code in this year, in this uh, document date, this is the posting date, this is the period, this is the currency, and this is the customer 20038, and we have paid $1,000. There's a thousand dollars, and this vendor, uh, the customer, is debited, and my travel account is credited. So you have to debit and credit. And if you go back, and I want to see the balance now. Let's say, okay, I did the invoice. We look at the invoice, and I want to see the balances. So I want to go back and see the balances. So this is FD10N and I put my customer number. So this is my customer number in this company code in this fiscal year 2022. And we hit enter. And what do we see here? $1,000 balance. Now we have a different period, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. January to December. But then why we have a 13, 14, 15, 16? These are called a special period for closing purposes. Because when you are done your 31st December, your accounting doesn't end. You still have to do closing. So these are the four period. So this is January, February till 11, 12, which is November and December. Then why do you have a 13, 14, 15, 16? Because those are called a special period for the closing purposes, for example. Because your posting is finished, your fiscal year is over on 31st December, but you may still be, your, your, your posting is not finished. Your closing of the books is not done. Your reporting to the government is not done. So you still have a four special period for the purpose of doing closing, etc. And I have a debit entry. See that thousand dollar debit. If I double click on it, I can see further detail also. See, system will tell me okay, this is my customer in this company code. This is the name of customer. This is the city Edison. And I have a document number on this date due on 315 based upon payment term. And this is a red color. Red color basically means it is open. And it is open because this payment has not been done. We have not paid to the, cus the customer has not paid us. And therefore, it is a red color and is open transaction as far as SAP is concerned. <clears throat> okay. So, and then we have a thousand dollars. Go back. Back. We did. Uh, customer transactions. Let's do a couple of vendor transaction, for example, just a simple vendor transaction, customer transaction, some GL accounting, some uh, account payable, some account receivable, there's some basic transaction we are doing. Nothing else, nothing biggie. And then we go to doc, um, a document entry, FB60, we are trying to post a vendor invoice. And uh, this is my vendor. We select a vendor. We go to drop down. We select a vendor we want. And these are some of the vendor which we have. We created in the past classes. And uh, we select um, some of the vendor. So, for example, this is my vendor. We select that. We select the invoice date. My invoice date is today's date. And uh, we post thousand dollars again when we post vendor invoice, vendor account is credited, so there has to be corresponding debit account. So, if something get credit, something should get debit thousand dollars, and then we save it. Document. 19002 was posted in company code G. See the bottom. Congratulations. 
We have done our third exercise. We're going to do it many more time. And if you want to see this document display, so this is document number, this is the company code, this is the fiscal year, this is document date, this is the posting date, this is the period number one, which is January. And then this is the vendor, financial vendor is credited because customer get debited. Yeah? And at the time of invoicing, vendor get credited. Vendor is my creditor. And this is a reconciliation account. Now, if I want to go back and check a account balance, for example, how can I see my account balance? So we close this, we go to account, and we want to see display balances, and we select the vendor, and we hit execute. And here we have a double click. Balance 1000, credit entry. Period one, January, we double click on it. Okay, this is my document. So this is the vendor number, this is the company code, this is the name of the vendor in this city, in this company code, this is the document, this is document type. That is what we see here in the next slide. Different document type, you see that? KR, KR is a vendor invoice, DR is a customer invoice. That is what we see here, KR document type, because KR represent is a customer invoice. This is the payment term, posting date this, document date this, due date is 315, based upon the payment term. And this is due on $1,000 is the balance. And that is what we see, different type of document, customer invoice, vendor invoice, GR. we did three. But there are many more actually. And this also we're going to do multiple different other ways. So that is what this basically means. Then we have a different kind of posting key. You see the posting key. Now what is the posting key? So if I go back and uh, I want to see, let us say in a document. So if I go to document display hit enter. If you see here, there is a posting key. This is posting key. Posting key basically means what get debited, what get credited. So my vendor got credit and my GL account got debit. So the posting key 40. And uh, that is what we see here in the posting key. And uh, in the SAP, these are the standard posting key for customers. Standard posting key for vendors, standard posting key for general, for asset, for material. So that basically means that many different permutation combination of the credits and debits for the customer, for the vendor, for the GL, for asset, for material you can have. And these are all standard posting keys, type of posting. Posting key means type of posting, credit or debit for customer or vendor, for GL or asset, material or vendor, which is one. So those attributes are defined by posting key. And uh, you can run different reports. So you can get balance display, line item display. Those are the different reports we saw, balance display. You can see line item display. And from the line item display, you can go to original document as well. So when we say balance display, that is basically that document which you are looking at. So if you go back here, so if you go to account table, and uh, if you go back here, this is the balance, display balances. That is what we are talking about, display balances. And when we see display balances, we can see for customer, for vendor, for GL, we put our customer vendor which we want, we click, and this is our vendor balances display. And if we click on it, then we can get a line item display. Line item display. From the line item, you can go further detail in original document. So you have a lot of drill down. If you go back here and click on it, 
then you can go to your display document. So you can flow back to the your document. If there is any document document overview, you can see that. So you can drill down, drill down, drill down. That's what it basically means. And that is what we see here. Okay, so today in the beginner class, this is what we are planning to talk and cover. And uh, okay, so this is my email, dsa.mythinkt.com. This is my email address, 973-885-7245. So you are very welcome to make a note of my email and make a note of my phone number. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. If uh, you you can call me, and um, I'm uh, always available any day after ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. Uh, if you wanna call it, you're welcome to call me. Yeah, yeah. We we can talk about this, Jimmy. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, I remember you. Yep. Thank you, Hiro. How are you? Good. Nice to see you, Hiro. Hope you all well in this COVID world. Nice to see you. Can you give me detail on training? Um, okay. Well, it's on a matter of giving. So normally the training is uh, means there's whole detail. Uh, you can ask Sonal uh, if you don't know uh, detail of Sonal. So let me give Sonal. So this is Sonal's detail. Sonal at um, mythink3.com. So you can email her also, and she will send it to you. Uh, whole detail about the course and all that. I can give you a bit of an overview. So you can. This is her email address. I'm suppose you might she might be getting. So the the total course is about seventy hours of my lecture time and uh, you will get uh, training material so if i uh, have to provide uh, you get um, system training material we do mock interview we place you you know we mark a resume preparation mock interview and all that so these are some of the things which we do but if you want detail see you already have but these are some of the uh, highlighted aspect of the course uh, we do such a day Sunday class. I teach on such a day Sunday. It's about two months, around uh, 18, 20 classes, uh, around 70 hours of my lectures. You get training material, PDF form, and you get a SAV system access and all that. Okay. It's start, I think she's targeting uh, in I think 20, I don't know exactly, you can talk to her. Uh, she will be probably the best person. I think uh, she is targeting on 22nd, I guess, 22nd. So she is targeting 22nd, uh, yeah. And then two month, about 19, uh, nine to 10 weeks. So around uh, 18 to 20 classes, roughly. Could be slightly more, but you will get 70 hours of my lectures. <clears throat> uh, we will provide you books, so you don't need to buy any book. Kunal, so training material, you will get it from me and uh, we'll provide uh, certification material. So you'll get it uh, material, training material, certification material from me. You don't need to buy any book. There are others available, but you don't need to buy anything. Parik Pok Hai. Yeah, you're gonna get a certification material from me.
thank you uh, so much thank you kunal which one is in more demand sap fico sap sd both are equally same actually both are used by every company does this course include co yes it does Nineteen or nine? Yes. Ru Kumar. What is Ru K R? What is your full name, Ru? Because is it your real name, Ru? What is your full name? Roop Krishna. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I pronounce you correctly. Which one is more challenging? You need more practice. That's very much similarly. Everybody need about two month time frame. So it's more related to background. I suggest FICO for the people who has a finance and accounting background because finance has a lot of accounting, a lot of finance. Uh, so if people don't have that background, I suggest not to do FICO because it becomes slightly more complex for those people. Thank you, Kishore, um, Supriya. Yes, uh, it in both Supriya. Um, can we learn two module at a time? Yes, but I don't recommend do one thing at a time. Don't do two. Means you're gonna do module is good for me, Kunal, but I don't recommend. I I just tell everybody just do one thing at a time. I have a MBA bachelor's in business. Okay, good. Do you help in support and issues? Yes. We do post implementation support. That is very important for us. Which module is my specialization? I'm doing SAP 24 years. I do three modules, MM, SD, and FI. 24 years. Thank you, Kunal. I have a bachelor's in biology, okay? Uh, I will not recommend finance uh, for UK if that is your question. Finance, I always recommend for the people who has finance accounting background. Uh, otherwise, it becomes slightly complex for the people. Means people can learn. Means uh, it's not that people cannot learn FICO. But don't start with the FICO module if you don't have a finance and accounting background. Like uh, you have a charter accountant or MCOM, BCOM, or various finance and accounting, e-commerce degrees. Those people are more suitable for FICO. Can somebody else also do? Yes, I have seen people doing it. But is it recommended? No. Then do other modules. There is SD, MM. There are a bunch of other modules also. Does this course goes in depth or is another course for that? 70 hours I'm doing, so I'm sure I'm doing some I'm doing some details, I believe. Otherwise, what I will do 70 hours, Ravi. How long it take to take means market is pretty all right. A lot of people getting start getting interviews in few weeks time frame. That's what I'm observing now. Thank you and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Supriya. And thank you, everyone. Uh, it's uh, already 12 minutes over the time. Is SAP similar like Peach Tree and Quick Book? Oh. You are comparing uh, football 
and uh, planet Earth. Both are round, but that much of a difference is there in QuickBook and SAP. Thank you for today's class. Thank you, Kishore. I will email Sonal the further. Yeah, means all these course detail and all that course prospectus is there. Everything is written down. You're very welcome to send an email to Sonal and she will send you the whole. Good night, Kishore. Thank you. Does this course train you to be a functional analyst? Yes, sir. It will make you SAP functional consultant. Currency is always a specific to, uh, to a company code. So every company code have their own currency. Thank you, Kunal. Can a person do who don't have knowledge about MNCs or if a fresher? Fresher can do means I have a numerous people who has been fresher means half of my class is from fresher. But normally for finance though, I believe that people, the appreciation of the finance module will come to the people who has a finance and accounting background. So fresher without experience, okay with me, but uh, I will not recommend uh, without uh, finance accounting. Uh, means people do without finance accounting also because I've taught gazillions and gazillions of people i mean i have a people who has electronic engineer who is doing fico and one of the best i've seen so means can technically do yeah there's no restriction you can learn whatever you want actually so but if he's somebody see the normal rule of thumb uh, for fico i suggest people to have a finance accounting background there will be quizzes, texts, and practices. Yes, during the course, I provide assignments, homework, and after class, I do three mock interviews, and I do religiously. Okay. What is the best time to call you? Uh, you can call me anytime after 10, 30, 11 o'clock. On my cell phone you can call me if i don't pick up at that time leave me voicemail i will call you back if i'm i may be another call or something so my cell phone i give it again so my cell phone is 973-885-7245 my phone number disa that my think tree.com that's my email this is my phone number you can call me leave me voicemail whatsapp text me this is a us number so just so you all know um, because if many people in my class come from overseas and all that, I'm based in US. This is US number. So this is for the people who might be joining my class from you know other countries than uh, than US. Okay, thank you all. Thank you very much, and uh, really appreciate you all joining um, the session. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, I will. Uh, Talk to you soon. Thank you for your time. Take care.